Hey, welcome back everybody to my Good Bad Ugly series, and we are picking up another episode of Vampire. Uh, we've been doing our good choices now. I know I go kind of go back and forth between the good and bad because this is a long game, a lot to do. It has a lot of action in, in, in addition to being a story game, so it, it reminds me a bit of like Witcher a little bit. Witcher 3, which, you know, from what I've seen, I have, haven't actually played Witcher 3, which is something I will do in the future, but it is similar in that aspect where it's action mixed with strong story elements. Um, different from like narrative driven, driven game but they have similarities in that your choices have consequences so I think it's like a, a hybrid of narrative and hybrid of action is what I'll call it um, but since I'm getting kind of far ahead I'm gonna have to like level up so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a lot of side quests in this playthrough like a lot of the local investigations to kind of try to get level up because I am severely behind in terms of level compared to where I should be and that's because I'm playing good and I'm not trying to eat anybody and in my bad choice, you can see that I've eaten quite a, a couple people so far, and I'm the same level as my good choice, but I've, I've played half as much in terms of actual time compared to my good choices. And that's because when you actually eat people, you get a, a huge level boost compared to when you try to be a good vampire. So it's harder to be good, apparently. So in order for us to kind of catch up a little bit, I'm going to do a lot of side quests in this playthrough. All right, let's get started. Good evening, Mr. Throckmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? I put up your public service announcement. <laughs> Consider the common folk warned about the vampiric presence. Thank you, Dr. Reed. You may not realize it, but you saved a great many lives today. Do you really think they could be useful? See the sad saint of the East End? How a single man can help so many people? I consider myself the discreet protector of these men and women. Tell me, Ichabod, why do you consider yourself the protector of Sean Hampton Shelter? He is a truly inspiring example. Dedicated, pious. His shelter is open to all, whoever they are. Most admirable. Goodbye, and good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. Good evening, Mr. Throckmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? Do you need my medical attention, sir? Actually, I may. In my line of work, I have to stop at any sign of infection. Treating a vampire hunter's wounds is certainly a first for me. I'm happy to help you, of course. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Your support means a lot. Goodbye, and good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. Glad to see you again, Mr. Reed. Do you need my medical attention, Miss Paxton? I can keep going, Dr. Reed. Of course you can, Miss Paxton, but I wouldn't recommend it. Please, take this. You will feel better. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Thank you. Really. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. You again? What do you want? I've identified the men who stole from you. 
You were right. They were members of some self-proclaimed militia. I knew it! Did you find the money, too? Yes. Here it is. They thought they could finance their activities with it. I never thought a man like you would be kind enough to... I misjudged you. Badly. I'm... I'm... Well... Thank you, sir. Will you give the money back to your comrades, then? Fuck those bastards who fired me. I'll give the money to Miss Gillingham. Her son Jack was a friend of mine. He was killed recently. I know you were friends with Miss Gillingham's son, Jack. Tell me about his death. Jack's murder has been a shock to the neighborhood. A sign that the situation is now out of control. Why is that? There has always been tension between the wet boot boys and members of the trade union. But a murder? That's a first. Who killed him? No one will ever know. One thing is certain. While Jack was alive, I had one less reason to drink. Why does that upset you so much? I wish I had found the time and words to tell him how important he was to me before it was too late. Another failure for Giselle Paxton. Well, I'll leave you for now. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. I hope the turquoise turtle is still open. Come now, Lottie. There is still much work to do. Good evening, Mr. Woodby. Good evening to you, my young doctor. Do you need my medical attention, sir? Unfortunately, yes. The spirit is willing, but the flesh, well, you know. <laughs> Nobody is immune to disease. There's no need to be ashamed of that. Well... Oh, thank you, Doctor. Now maybe I'll live another day or two. Goodbye, sir. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? Do you need any help? <coughs> Can't be good for business to see the bartender cough in your beer. Indeed. It would be a shame to taint the delicate taste. Oh, thank you, Doctor Reed. My customers and I, we all thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Times like these are good things just as I Good evening, sir. Whatever. Don't you recognize me? We met a few nights ago. Don't take it personally. I spent a lot of energy forgetting what I did the night before. Yes, you had definitely drunk too much then as well. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm Dyson Delaney. I'll try to remember you this time. Inebriation aside, do you need medical help? Yes. I feel sicker than usual these days. Take this, then. And perhaps you could try to slow down the alcohol intake, too. Hey, Doc, you don't really want me to stop the only remedy I can afford. What do you do for a living, Mr. Delaney? I drink. I drink in the morning and at noon. I drink at night. And then I drink some more. Why do you drink so much? Maybe it's because I prefer dying slowly. Death can be so abrupt. Personally, I like to see mine coming at my own pace. You sound very sad, sir. That's because I am, Doc. Don't you work at all? I'd love to, but I don't have the time. Didn't I tell you? Drink in the morning and at noon, I'll drink at night. Is there anything in particular that you like about this part of town? Except for the cheap drinks, I mean. How dare you say such a thing? I love this neighborhood. So friendly, so joyful. 
No reason at all to rejoice, then. Life is hopeless, and then we die, is that it? Let me tell you a story. All right. Go on. A few years ago, when I believed a resolute man could change things around here for good, a tragedy occurred nearby. What kind of tragedy? It was a bomb. A bomb that exploded and killed many people. Metal and blood everywhere. Shouts, fire, broken window of the shoe shop, the torn street light. You lost people you loved that day, didn't you? I've lost everything. But you know what the worst part is? I don't even remember where it happened. I've drunk so much to forget it. And now I can't remember where it was. I can't pay my homage to the dead. I'm sorry. Mr. Delaney. It's okay. If you ever find the place, just leave a flower for me there. Even if you tell me where it is, I'm not sure I'd memorize it. Is there anything in particular that you like about this part of town? Except for the cheap drinks, I mean. How dare you say such a thing? I love this neighborhood. So friendly. So joyful. Why are you so cynical? Cynicism is the polite way to express despair, Doctor. Surely you must have had dreams and expectations when you were young, like everybody else. Sure. I wanted things to change. To really change, and to change for good. The bigger the dream, the harder the fall. Do you really think the world is that bad? No. I believe we all can choose to make it better. But most of us are too weak, too corrupt and too guilty. I failed for sure, but others will come. Sounds like you were an idealist, which is honorable. No, sir. I was an anarchist and I believe that exclusive property is a robbery in nature. I wanted a new world to rise from the ashes, Dr. Reed. I want to know more about your past as an anarchist, Dyson. I'm still an anarchist, Doctor. Make no mistake. I just reject violence as a tool to change the world, unlike my comrades. Do you still see your comrades, then? Even if you don't agree with their methods anymore, I mean? No. I hope they'll come to share my point of view one day. I'll raise my glass to that splendid idea. Do you believe in a bloodless revolution, then? I do not believe in much anymore, Doctor. But I'll admit I like your idea of peaceful change. I like it a lot. Goodbye, Mr. Delaney. Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? Can I offer you my medical help, Miss Cox? Giving out for free? You'd make a poor businessman, Dr. Reed. Perhaps I would. Please, take this. You will feel better. Thank you. But don't expect me to owe you anything. Goodbye, Miss Cox. Pleasure, sir. Been a while since...
I'd step. See them fancy clothes? This one's a trap! Good evening, Christina. Change your mind, Mr. Reed? Do you need any assistance, Miss Popper? It depends on the price of your medicine. I will see you later. What do you know about Nurse Crane and her dispensary? That woman is a saint. She's living proof that a strong will is sometimes all you need to make a difference. Goodbye, Miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. Good evening, Harry. May I come in? Sure. Sure. Is there only pain and suffering in this world? So, may I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? Do you need any medical help, young man? Yes, I do. I feel so tired. I don't know if it's the epidemic, but everything seems so hard. You'll feel better with this, but you need to get a grip, young man. Medication alone won't cure melancholia. I'm not sure I'm happy with the idea of living long in a world like this. But I thank you for your concern, sir. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. Even my dream... It's locked, all right. Even my dreams are soaked with gloom. Good evening, my dear colleague. You look ill, Miss Swanborough. I wonder if your concoction will do the trick. I have no doubt it will. But I'm not against a second opinion, Dr. Reed. Well, there you have it. Take this remedy, but be discreet. It may damage your business otherwise. Thank you. I'd like to see what kind of medicine you're selling.
Good evening, Benjamin. Can I help you? I'm afraid not, Mr. Reed. You don't seem well, Benjamin. Do you need any help? I always feel ill, sir. It's like I'm never right. I will see you later. I have found a very interesting letter. Your son planned to prove his worth to the gang by stealing your medicine. Oh, I see. So the little bugger thought he could use his dad to build a reputation. The gang's recruiter was dead when I found him. Perhaps you should take better care of your son. I love my Albert, sir. Believe me. It's just a... Well, I'm an arsehole, I suppose. Anyway, thanks for the letter. This is for your trouble. A gun, alcohol, and a bad temper make a terrible cocktail, sir. Goodbye for now. Good evening, Mr. Whittaker. It's Father Whittaker, my son. So, are you still lost in your rational delusions? I have found Samuel, your disciple. I am afraid I have bad news. I already expected the worst. He should already have come back. He is dead, isn't he? Yes, he is now. The epidemic took him. Samuel steadily made donations to our cause. He would have rewarded you himself if you'd found me in that awful cemetery. Please accept this money. I have heard enough for tonight. Goodbye.
This could be the box Lewis thought he lost. Huh. There's a letter inside. A love letter from Joe Peterson's wife addressed to Barrett Lewis. Who? This must be a picture of the bomb explosion Dyson Delaney spoke of. So, oh, Mr. Hooks and Nurse Hawkins are an item. <laughs> Those two have hidden their affections well. Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? I found this box in an abandoned building nearby. I believe it belongs to you. Let's have a look. Yeah, this is mine. So, you face those loons that roam around there. Extraordinary. I suppose I was lucky. Luck is a commodity round here. Yours should be properly rewarded. About this package, it's not just tools and trinkets, is it? I want to be rude or anything after your kind gesture, but it's none of your business. Joe Peterson. He's the villain here, isn't he? But you seem to know each other. I've known Joe for years. I saw him box once or twice. He was a friend then. But these days, he's just another thug. What can you tell me about Mr. Peterson? Besides his behavior toward you, obviously. Colossus Joe was a decent boxer. Good one, even. But after his wife passed away, he found every excuse to stop training. Just wanted to pick fights with everyone. It's never easy to find a new path in life. Especially after the loss of a loved one. But crime is certainly not the best option. We've all had some rough times, ain't we? But most of us don't use our fists to see us through. And no one has ever stood up to this thug. Nobody would be fool enough to stand against a wet boot, boy. Barrett, 
You had an affair with Joe's wife, didn't you? Yeah, I did. She's the only woman I loved. My first regret is that she stayed with Joe after Harry was born. The second is I never shed a tear when she died. Did you ever try talking to Joe? Never. But I suspected he knew everything, even without knowing it. And he decided to make me pay in his own way. Do you mean... you're Harry's father? No one will ever know for sure. And it's better that way. And I don't believe I'd have been all that bad as a dad. What do you know of Harry Peterson? The boy seems so fragile. Not like his father at all. Harry's a good boy, but he spends most of his time complaining. He's had it tough, all right, but he needs to grow a pair. What troubles him, exactly? Well, despite being his father's son, almost everything, I think. He never wanted to come to Whitechapel in the first place. Hates this place more than most of us. Do you have any news of Nurse Crane? and her dispensary. I guess what she does for people makes it all right in the end. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. All right, I'm letting go and end it right here. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next episode.